Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for attending uh, tonight's meeting. Um, coming along tonight, uh, attending traffic management. I, I have, a, as a chair, an announcement to make before I continue with the rest of the business. Uh, I would like to welcome everybody tonight's meeting and also require to attend in person uh, following the expiry of Coronavirus Act regulation permitted online meeting. We are using equipment connecting to the chamber in Microsoft Teams meeting. This is a live stream available through the Teams and recording of this meeting will be up uh, loaded into the website afterwards. So uh, thank you. That's the that's the announcement I had made. And uh, I know I'll, before I continue with the agenda, I know it's not on the agenda. Uh, I'll take apologies. I had apologies from Councillor Mark Keeping uh, due to pre-engagement uh, before he got elected. Uh, he had an engagement. Unfortunately, he's not here today, so he'll be in future. So uh, are there any apologies? No? So that's the only apologies I got. Uh, Minister, uh, sorry, declaration. First item I have is declaration of interest. Do I have any declaration of interest? No. So that's okay. So then I'll mark that pass. And uh, item two is minutes of the previous meeting held on the 3rd of March 2022. Can I take those as a correct record? Yeah. Right. Thank you. I'll put the signs off. Right. Item three is questions from member of public and also and councillors. So I'll take the member of public first. Uh, yeah, Sue McCarville, is she here? Uh, question on Hearth, uh, Hearthcourt Avenue, New Lane Hill. So I think we'll normally what we'll do is if she's not here, we'll send her an answer uh, via post or email. Yeah. Is the committee happy with that? Yeah. Right. right. So that's the only one question for member of public. We'll move on to the question from the councillors. And the first question is from Councillor White. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this question is on Kings Road accidents. Following the last Green Councillor question about road safety on Kings Road, there have been more serious road accidents on this busy stretch of road. Please can the lead councillor summarise the analysis which has been conducted of the accidents and what has been learned over the last three years? Thank you. Uh, can I ask the lead member to give a response on behalf of the chair? Um, chair, I thank Councillor White for his question. The Council and Thames Valley Police have an established protocol for collaboration where fatal and some serious road traffic accidents occur. This aids both the investigation process and identifying any subsequent patterns or learning. In some instances, alterations could be considered to reduce the likelihood of traffic accidents recurring, but that is not always the case, particularly where incidents are occurring for reasons that are outside of the control of the highway authority. The council is well aware of the relatively high number of incidents along Kings Road and reviews all accident data that is supplied by the police. It would not be appropriate nor permissible for the council to share or comment on details and causations of these incidents in a public forum due to the sensitive information that is involved and the potential for upset that could be caused to relatives and friends of those persons involved. From the nature of the incidents and summaries of police investigations, it is challenging to identify reasonable engineering solutions that could be effective in mitigating future accidents. The council has not yet been contacted by the police regarding their investigations into the most recent incident, which we would have expected if it related to the road layout. 
The numbers of casualties uh, in Kings Road is of course concerning and the council will continue to cooperate with the Thames Valley Police in delivering and promoting increased road safety. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Page. Uh, Councillor White, do you have a supplementary? Yes, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it, it's disappointing that I accept that with the recent accidents that that's too too new for the police and the, the council to have worked through uh, what's happened. Uh, but I asked for a summary of the analysis over the last three years. I would have thought that this could be provided in, in general terms. Uh, if, if you won't provide it in this public forum, please, can I be sent it as a councillor? Councillor Page. Chair, Councillor White is obviously suffering from amnesia because he was sent a detailed reply on the 2nd of March, a copy of which I have in front of me, which goes into great detail and provides confidential information that could not be put in the public realm. Um, and there are three, five pages in total um, of very detailed information, including an analysis of accidents, all of which could be attributed um, to individuals if they were put in the public arena. And perhaps Councillor White might like to revisit uh, the email that was sent him on that date. And the author sitting on my right here, Mr Penman, I'm sure will be quite happy to give you further briefing in private, but it is not appropriate to put in the public domain detailed information about accidents that occur there. And I would have thought that was self-evident, Chair, and could I therefore ask Councillor White to look again at the briefing that he was given dated the 2nd of March. Thank you, Councillor Page. And we'll move on to the next item now. Item four, petitions, we received none. There are none petitions. Right. Thank you. Moving on to item five is a waiting restriction review program. Uh, first one's A, the mount 2021B. Can I just ask James, could you just uh, give a brief update, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. So this is a two-part report. So the first part um, is relating to the uh, last decision that we need for the 2021 uh, B Waiting Restriction Review Programme. And this item refers to the mount. Uh, so there's a deferred decision at March's Traffic Management Subcommittee uh, pending further discussion with residents uh, around whether this scheme should be implemented as advertised or withdrawn from that programme. Um, and the decision today will release uh, the rest of the programme to be delivered. Um, part two um, of the report uh, re relates to the 2022A programme. So in March, uh, we brought to, count to, to members the list of requests that we've received for inclusion. Uh, we've investigated those um, shared recommendations with members, uh, which you see here today with any comments received. And we're seeking agreement from the subcommittee to proceed to statutory consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Penman. Now I have uh, two speakers uh, from member of public. Uh, in so can I ask uh, Jill Simpson come to uh, would like to speak on the mount? Please come to the microphone. Uh, good, good evening. <laughs> Relax, please. Yeah, Jill. Uh, you have five minutes to. S Sorry, you got the mic on. Really, you have five minutes to speak on this. And uh, it, uh, please, can you just introduce yourself and uh, yeah. let us know what you're speaking okay. regarding? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Jill Simpson. My family have lived in the Mount for 35 years. Many of us have written or emailed you recently, and I trust that you've had time to read and digest our views. Most objections to the proposed changes to parking restrictions were from a minority of residents and Progress Theatre. Since Councillor's comments at the TMSC meeting March the 3rd, Progress has changed its website, encouraging patrons to use public transport, car share, and park at Allcroft Road and Sintra Avenue. They could also include the Uni from five o'clock, which is free, and meters at Elmhurst Road. 
On recent production nights, we monitored parking and observed many arriving on foot, though some still parked on the mount, even when their car park wasn't full. So changes in restrictions are certainly not going to close the theatre, as the hyperbolic media frenzy suggested. Now that progress is proved not to be in jeopardy, the main objector, along with the Greens, had conjured up further parking spaces, claiming lots of room for residents' cars. If cars park nose, nose to tail, that may be, but in reality, people park their cars leaving variable gaps and there is a lot of wastage. The mount is further threatened by the arrival of double yellow lines on Shinfield Road, where 30 to 40 cars park daily. Many will migrate back to the mount, which is the most lenient of all parking restrictions in Zone 15R. Residents clearly are unduly impacted by the ever-increasing, tightening parking restrictions in the surrounding area. A joint consultation meeting was arranged by Greens without an initial invitation to the Labour councillor. It was not a balanced consultation and I was interrupted and met with noticeable and unnecessary hostility. No positive reason for opposing the change has been put forward since it has been accepted that the theatre won't close and from speaking to opposers, they have not been able to put forward any reason other than they do not want change, which is not a valid reason or one that should be supported by the council who after all put forward the proposal. To summarise, the majority of residents are in favour of the proposal as the original poll of signed responses submitted to the committee showed. The Progress Theatre will not close. The Green Party has perpetrated this misinformation and placed this above the wishes of the majority of Mount residents, and I quote resident Mark Haywood, their consultation meeting and backgrounder was frankly a farce as they had already predetermined the outcome and stated it clearly in their backgrounder, which was do nothing. The committee cannot approve the Shinfield Road proposal without considering the adverse impact that decision will have on the Mount. Every decision taken problem shifts the issue to the next vulnerable location. And remember, realistically, we have between seven and 12 additional parking space above the number of the 43 resident permits and 30 to 40 cars about to find alternative parking options. Unfortunately, Nikki Haywood is unable to be with us, so I'm going to read her comments. As a disabled person, I have been very upset at the way in which I and 20 other households that have written to this committee have been ignored and given second class citizen status to bots and non reading residents. Responses that were genuine were misled to think a theatre would be closed. Every party would say they support the most vulnerable in the community and their constituents, and yet here, residents are again being dragged on through a protected process by a social media savvy vocal minority. The vocal minority of Mount residents who don't struggle to park are mainly from the south side, where 13 households have six adjacent bays. It is great for them that they don't experience issues, but to stand in the way of their neighbours who have 27 households to four bays and testify that they do is not community minded behaviour. The Mount is an island of lenient parking surrounded by areas of tighter restrictions that favour residents, as in New Road and Whitley Wood Lane, to name but two. Equality for the Mount, as proposed by Highways, remains the fair solution. To vote against, it is to ignore the 21 verified households and you will be voting against parents of young children, grandparents, disabled people, elderly, NHS and shift workers. Julia Munro, who also cannot be here, as in the middle of a family crisis, texted, in the comings and goings to London to help recently, returning home late with stuff to unload, yet unable to park near the house, isn't helping stress levels. She recently replied to Councillor McElroy's email asking to be involved in the group that is working on objective process that has everyone's buy-in and has not even received an acknowledgement, let alone information. You in have event, 10 seconds to wrap uh, up. In please. the event of the council's rejection of its own proposal, we would hope that we will be able to tweak it as suggested by Councillor Page and consider some alternatives to be put forward for the next meeting in September. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, could you stay there? To get it in in five minutes. Thank you. Right, fine. Thank could you. you stay there, please? No I just worries. want to have this, this subcommittee wish to ask any question? No? No. Okay. Thank you. Take the Thank chair, you. please. Uh, can I have the next speaker, please, come forward? Uh, is Paul Bennett for against? 
Thank, Thank you. Chair. Could you just state your name and yeah. where you're from? Um, uh, Paul Bennett, oh. I'm a resident of 34 The Mount. Um, there's been a, a lot of mistruths and misdirection from the people who have originally opposed, proposed the changes to the current scheme. Um, they used an initial flawed poll claiming that there was a majority that wanted changes within the Mount. And I've heard again today there's acquisition accusations of using bots as part of the consultation when actually the, the responses that were the same were the ones that wanted the scheme. The responses from people that didn't want the scheme were all different. So, but I want to talk about the facts today, the facts that we put forward. So we start with a parking survey, which we gave to the council. We did over 142 days and over that 142 days, we have basically concluded there were always space available on the Mount. There's talk about people not parking correctly, so there's spaces in between. But if you look at the survey, there are still loads of spaces at any given time in the Mount. It's not outside people's houses, but we don't have the right to park outside our house. That's what you give up when you buy a terraced house um, with on-street parking. <laughs> And there's talk of permits and permits giving people right, but they don't. It's just a way that you can park on that road at that particular time. So there's no given right to park outside your own house. But I do sympathise with people that have um, issues with getting shopping, etc. But we have the same problem and then we just park outside a house, unload the shopping, unload what you're doing and then move the car. The consultation was the, the second part of um, what we went through. So there were effectively 1,018 votes against and 103 votes for. Some argued that the progress here to skewed the number of responses and there were, there were a lot of responses from the progress. But if you go through the responses from people that are residents, there is still a majority of people that don't want this change. Not all of the people um, put down their addresses or said they're residents, but we've looked at the ones where people are residents, i.e. my response didn't say I was from 34 the Mount, it was just a response. And there are a majority of people that do not want it. And thirdly, the residents meeting. So we spent some time trying to define the problem and we couldn't because there isn't a problem. Um, just a few people believe in that really they want to be able to park outside their house where there is still parking around the Mount. I've heard the Shinfield Road argument as well, and this came up in the um, in the residents meeting. There is a lot of parking on Shinfield Road, and, and I'm sure that will get resolved and it will move it. But the whole thing about when this original scheme came in for the Mount, there's a restriction for cars that can't park all day. The Shinfield Road one is about people parking all day, and that's the bit that needs to move. But they won't move to the Mount because you can't park there all day. That's the whole problem. So we believe there's a lot of people that work at the university that park there and it will get moved, unfortunately, but it won't get moved to the Mount. So I don't think that is a valid argument around why you would change the, the, um, the park restrictions for the Mount. And really lastly, I'd just like to thank Councillor McElroy for the work that he did within the, the Residents Association meeting and he was helped by Will, by Kat and by, um, and by Rob. So thank you for your help. Thank you. Uh... Does the subcommittee wish to ask him? No? Okay, thank you. Could you take a seat, please? Back there. I have two more speakers on the item. Uh, first is uh, uh, Councillor Will, uh, Will Cross, and, uh, and uh, Councillor McEnroy, which is, I think, is he joining us by yeah. online? So I have, I'll call Councillor Will first. Thank you, Chair. I really welcome the opportunity to address this committee. Before the election, Councillor Page advised that Reglands councillors would need to work together to facilitate discussions between residents and stakeholders to chart a way forward on this often contentious issue. And as you know, a number of local residents attended a town hall style meeting recently, which was jointly facilitated by myself and my ward, my ward colleague, Councillor McElroy. As members will be aware, much of the discussion has been around Progress Theatre, and the use of parking bays by its patrons, as well as other non-residents, visitors and students. A significant number of residents attended the community meeting I mentioned, the majority of whom did not support the proposed changes. However, I'm well aware from the correspondence that I've received that there are also other residents, several of whom were not able to attend the meeting, who do support increased parking restrictions on the Mount. 
particularly some residents who live on the north part, which parking data shows is one of the hotspots for problems. As the committee will be aware, the current restrictions on the Mount are as follows. Between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on weekdays, residents and two hours no return. Outside of those times, no restrictions. The proposals before the committee are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Sunday, residents and two hours no return. Outside of those times, that is late evenings and overnight, residents only. The restrictions on visitor parking at these times was one of the key bones of contentions for progress and many residents. I'm conscious, as speakers have said today, of the fact that parking on the Mount, the scheme at the moment, is one of the least strict in the borough in terms of hours of operation. And I'm really willing to work with residents and my fellow councillors to look at other potential parking schemes and hours of operation that may bring benefit to residents without impacting on the theatre. And I suggested several potential alternatives at the recent community meeting. I really welcome the fact that several members of the public who attended to support the theatre were very open to such alternative proposals in principle. Several residents on both sides, and I'm reluctant to use that term, um, have made assertions about the level of support both for and against in various different consultations that have been carried out and the proportion of responses that came from different places. However, I should be clear that this is not about having a 52-48 style referendum sort of decision. It's about arriving at consensus and developing workable and effective traffic management schemes. I really do urge residents to work cooperatively together on this. There are really strong feelings, but the way forward must be working together, which I'm more than happy to facilitate and dialing down some of the neighbours at war style situation that's happening at the moment, sadly. At the previous committee meeting, you'll recall that Councillor Barnett Ward flagged up the issue of Progress's website directing theatre goers to park on the Mount. And I'm really grateful that this has now been amended to direct them to alternative locations instead. I think more can still be done to encourage active transport as well as signposting patrons to the university car park. And I met with the university recently. They welcome this suggestion and I'm also pleased at the recent community meeting progress pledged to investigate the possibility of allowing residents to use its own car park at other times. So in light of this, I'm pleased to note um, in a letter that I received from um, the resident who spoke earlier and from other campaigners for the restrictions that um, theatre goers have been observed arriving on foot and by bus and that the problems haven't been as bad recently. So that's really welcome. Um, this letter and indeed in comments by a range of residents at the community meeting does also highlight the upcoming changes on Shinfield Road where parking bays will be removed, which may, as mentioned, lead to displacement of vehicles to other areas such as the Mount. Um, I've asked Councillor Page and James Penman if the existing proposals could be amended and they both informed me that changes to the scheme of the scale suggested by some residents would require a fresh consultation and could, be not, could not be done as a tweak. Given the issues with the Mount proposals as they stand, I anticipate that the committee will vote to reject the plans. However, I would ask you to resolve to closely monitor the parking situation on the Mount particularly in light of the Shinfield Road parking bay changes, which may lead to displacement as mentioned, with a view to considering further proposals in the new future if necessary, as well as the level of enforcement needed should facts on the ground change. And I reiterate my request to residents of all views on this to continue working with each other and with me to find an amicable solution to the tensions and issues on the Mount. Right, thank you, Councillor. Cool. Does subcommittee have to ask any questions? No? Right, thank you. Uh, can we get Councillor Will McElroy to speak uh, online? Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead. Sir. Excellent. Thank you, Chair. Good day, good day, everyone. Um, I'll try to be quick and not repeat anything that we've already heard. Um, I think. What's really big here and made this blown up is obviously that it's been wildly arg widely argued that a lot of these changes or these changes could harm the viability of the Progress Theatre, which is a much loved local institution recently recognised the Queen's Awards. Uh, given this context, in order to support the changes, um, Redlands Green councillors would have needed to see the following. A clear signal from residents in favour of the changes. I think however you cut that consultation, there's definitely not a clear signal in favour of the changes. Secondly, we'd have need, needed to see hard data that quantifies that there is indeed a significant problem. Now, as a scientist with considerable experience in this, I was not compelled by the data shown in the original petition. Um, however, that done um, subsequent to that in collaboration with network management, it was very clear that there was no problem 
um, certainly at the at the level of the mount as a whole, which I'll come back to in a moment. And then the final bit that we would have needed to have seen is that the proposal um, that is likely to resolve the issue as described in the initial petition, and which especially since um, there are nearly twice as many uh, permits issued for those households, um, for those um, that are looking to park in those eight spaces out front of their houses, I, I can't see how the proposal would would actually have the uh, the desired effect. Um, so for us, it was not clear that these criteria had been met, and as a result, we could not in good conscience have supported the proposal as it is. Um, However, I'm willing to admit that there is a chance that some, there was something that we were missing. So we were pleased that this committee gave us a chance to further probe the issue uh, to bring residents back together to that to work on this. So to that end, uh, Redlands councillors arranged for a town hall meeting uh, hosted at the Progress Theatre where residents could work together to suggest some mutually acceptable solutions. And um, in order to advertise this, we put a letter through uh, the letterboxes of every household on the Mount, Lower Mount and Sutton Walk. And we're pleased um, that on Thursday 26, the theatre kindly hosted a very lively discussion um, about parking on the Mount um, that was, in my opinion, quite well attended. Uh, it definitely had more um, in the against camp, but there were representatives um, from, uh, from those who wanted to change. And I, I must give special thanks to those who came along despite their apprehension or willing to participate for the benefit of the local community. Um, besides residents, we also had representatives from the theatre um, a technical expert from the council's network management team who's here with us tonight, uh, Redlands Ward Labour Councillor Will Cross, as well as uh, Catherine McCann and, and Councillor Rob White, who came along as a representative from uh, this committee. So the debate was mainly concerned with defining the problem and it was near unanimously agreed that it was not difficult to find parking on the mount as a whole. However, it was acknowledged that parking was more difficult at the lower end, uh, the lower mount and healthy mount. Um, it was also largely agreed that the situation was not serious enough to warrant making um, the currently proposed changes to waiting restrictions, given that the council is not willing to make substantial alterations to the current proposal at this point. Uh, we're definite, uh, we being um, Catherine and, and I as, as Redlands Ward councillors will be recommending that the subcommittee rejects this, um, uh, this proposal. Um, to bring back uh, something that's already been mentioned, we, there is recognition that if the proposal to add uh, double yellow lines on Chinfield Road is approved, uh, the displacement of cars that currently park there could create a problem for the Mount. So to echo what Will was saying, it is definitely the plan um, for residents to work together to monitor the situation using an objective process that already uh, that has everyone's uh, buy-in. Now I know some residents would be able to build on the work that they've already done with network management, and it's up to us to um, follow up on that. Um, as I said in the email uh, after the meeting, please let us know if you would like to get involved. And I obviously have apologies to Julia um, for not getting back to her. I haven't seen that email, which makes me nervous because that's not a good sign and not good optics, particularly for this. So I'll be writing to her immediately uh, after, this, after this meeting. Um, yeah, thanks for everyone who's, who's taken the time to participate. Uh, objectively and constructively. Thank you, you. Councillor McElroy. I uh, don't think we have any questions for Councillor uh, Can I uh, ask uh, Councillor Adele Ward, you indicated you wanted to say something. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, as Councillor Cross pointed out, I did uh, make a comment on the Mount's uh, website last time. I slung that brick bat, so I will give the bouquet this time. I was really pleased uh, when the papers came through to see the changes to their website. Um, I hope that has made a difference. It sounds like it has made a difference. Uh, I, but I said something else at the last committee meeting, which was that we're not here to sit in judgment and to create winners and losers. Uh, we're here to try and find a scheme that will be is a best fit. It's never going to be perfect. So it's never going to do everything for everyone. But before the boundary changes, I was a Cavisham Ward councillor and we spent, I think, actually it started before my time. So I think in total it was five years that it took to develop the lower Cavisham, the new lower Cavisham scheme that came in a couple of years ago. And that's because we went through multiple rounds of informal consultation, of councillors consultation, uh, before it even got to council officers. Then we went through informal, then we got to statutory, people raised issues. So we went back, we looked at it again, we brought more statutory and eventually we came up with a scheme that I haven't had any complaints against since it came in 
um, and there were people who felt very strongly about it, for and against it. And I was really pleased there that um, residents were able to engage um, in a positive way to help us make a good scheme. And I think that's really, really important to engage in a positive way to make a good scheme. There isn't one way of doing a parking scheme. So I think the decision um, for us and around the mount is not no change or these changes. Um, it is can we get the best fit? Can we address the concerns of the majority of people? Is there a way we can improve this scheme? And I think there is a way we can improve proposals beyond what is here. This is quite a heavy handed proposal that's in front of us. I am not convinced that we need restrictions at the level that are in this proposal. But I do understand that um, residents do want to see some changes to where their parking scheme uh, is designed. So for that reason, um, I am going to suggest that we do reject it at this point, but that, as Councillor Cross has said, this is a live issue. It's not then we draw a line under it and we never look at the mount again. Um, I am very much against bringing in schemes in anticipation of problems. Now, there aren't many of us left, actually, that have been on this committee for a few years, but some of us will remember um, when the Heights School was due to open on Maple Durham playing fields, there was a proposal from residents nearby there for extensive waiting restrictions because they were anticipating huge problems with uh, parents parking and preventing them being able to park on their road. And we didn't approve them at the time because it wasn't proven that it was needed and we've not had a request it, we, the problem doesn't seem to have materialised. So I do understand that people are concerned about displacement from Shilmfield Road. It is something we need to watch very carefully, but I wouldn't approve something now in anticipation of that displacement because I've seen before that it doesn't necessarily work. So nobody wins, nobody loses tonight. We say this isn't it, but I suggest that, so I'd suggest that we reject this now move forward with the rest of the programme, but that we do ask councillors to continue um, communicating, commu continue working with residents. And also bear in mind, I know Councillor McElroy, your points about data and being a scientist, and then you relied fairly heavily on the results of your meeting uh, when we've heard from residents that they felt it was a political meeting for one side and that therefore this may have affected the data that you collected. Well, that's what residents have said. You can, you can put your thumb down at what residents have said, but that's what they've told us, that they felt it was a meeting for one side and it wasn't for them. So you need to make sure that when you're consulting with people, that you're not taking a side, that you're listening so that everyone feels that they've got an opportunity to contribute. And that way we can come forward with a proposal for the Mount that will work for the best fit. It's never going to be perfect, but we can get a better fit than what we've got here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Andrew Smith, you indicated as well. Yes, uh, I wanted to say a few things. Um, I'm very pleased to hear about two developments, uh, that there has been that meeting with residents um, and that the theatre is now promoting local bus services and requesting that patrons don't park in the Mount. Um, I also feel that uh, there was a suggestion that came out last at the last committee meeting, I understand, uh, that to evaluate the use of the car park that the theatre has, and I would welcome to see that the 18 spaces there are fully used um, to mitigate the problem. I think ultimately uh, this is about uh, residents' views and, and its impact primarily on the theatre. I, I don't accept the view that the theatre will close due to these proposed parking restrictions. I did a, a quick calculation on this and I, I put it to the theatre and I didn't really get an adequate response. The auditorium of the theatre has got 96 seats. If you assume that the theatre is full and that 75% of people come by car, the requirement would be for 72 spaces. If you assume of that 72 that 75% of people come as a couple, the requirement is for 27 spaces. If you assume that of that 27, 60% could walk 150 metres from Allcroft Road, that requirement goes down to 11, which is less than the car park size as it is. So I, I don't accept that uh, it, it's about the, the threat to the theatre, but I do accept the reports from the ward councillors 
that the residents are split on this. And I also accept the idea that this has been a hard fought battle um, and, and also that we need to uh, pay attention to any possible displacement of vehicles from uh, Shinfield Road if, if we put double yellow lines along there. From the smattering of data that, that I've heard about, I don't think it's good enough to suggest that um, an, an anonymous uh, set of responses, i.e. you don't have to say where you're coming from, is okay. Clearly, there has been a campaign fought uh, primarily by the, uh, the theatre to say, back, uh, back off from this proposal or we will close. We don't know where half of those responses are coming from. So I don't think that's, I don't think that we've covered ourselves in glory in finding the right amount of information, which is why I support what both councillors are saying and, and what uh, 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 Councillor Barnett, Barnett Ward is also saying, that we need to step back a bit from this. Um, but we also need to be able to find some mechanism for distinguishing between people who are responding, who are residents, and people are responding who go to the theatre twice a year, but are on the theatre's database, and therefore, if the theatre tells them that they're under threat, that they will put in a, an objection. So we need to, I feel that we need to find some sort of way of, of assessing what the local need is. I mean, clearly, the policy that we have as a council is that we need to find measures to, to manage demand um, and also, also to encourage sustainable transport and also sustainable alternatives. So I support the, the proposal to reject to reject the proposal as it stands. I had, in fact, put forward a compromise proposal which was rejected by both sides when I put it forward. Um, but uh, no doubt, if there are constructive discussions ongoing and we monitor what is happening, happening with the Shinfield Road, we may get a solution. But I, I back what, what you're saying. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor White, you indicated as well. Thank you, Chair, and thanks to everyone that's come along this evening and is, is watching and listening. I, I think the majority of people who've spoken this evening agree that the scheme on the table is not right for the area. So uh, as, a, as the Green Council on the Traffic Committee, I will be voting against uh, the scheme for the mount. But that's not to say that uh, we do nothing, as others have said. I think we need to keep talking to residents as we've been doing, keep listening. And the thing that, that is really important is, to, is, is to, for residents to work together, collecting the data on what is happening in their, in their road. So we have an agreed, uh, agreed view of what the problem is. And so I'd really encourage residents to do that at the public meeting. It, as Councillor McElroy said, it was hard to pin down exactly what the problem was. Uh, the data that we had uh, from the survey conducted by residents uh, did show that there, there were, were always parking spaces in the mount or that the majority of the time there were parking spaces in the mount. Uh, and so I think it's focusing on uh, residents working together, collecting data, so we've got an agreed view of what the problem is if, if, if one develops in future. Uh, maybe maybe Shinford Road will, will create a problem, maybe it won't, but it's, it's keeping an eye on the situation and collecting data in a way that everyone can agree on what, what the problem is or, or isn't. Uh, so yeah, I'll be voting against the mount this evening. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Mitchell, you indicated. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, my concerns around this are, and I completely agree with Councillor Barnett Ward and Councillor Honsby Smith, this has been politicised. There has been a degree of political campaigning around this. Um, as a result, I'm not sure of the veracity of the original uh, detail within the, the consultation responses, as we've heard, I'm not going to repeat all that. And also, I have grave concerns over the way this latest meeting, which was supposed to be uh, an open meeting um, for everyone to attend, was sufficiently uh, publicised. I'm told by residents that it wasn't. I know what Councillor McElroy said about letters going through doors. I don't believe that was the case. I've been told by a number of residents they didn't know about it until they saw mention of it on Facebook, for example. Whatever the rights and wrongs of that, given that 
the fundamental core problem here seems to me the the historic leniency of the restrictions in that particular area. And as a result, there is an argument for a tightening, a, to coin a phrase, a leveling up of the, um, the restrictions in that area, particularly if displacement is going to become a problem uh, on Shinfield Road. I appreciate there are a certain amount of unknowns around this. I think Councillor White, hoping that uh, we can all live happily together and consult and agree on this, is frankly a little naive. Um, the, the tensions that this has caused in there and around the Mount are, are obvious to all of us. And uh, again, I appreciate that there, are, there should be no winners and losers. It should be a compromise that is acceptable to all. But I think the idea of residents working together that closely on this, given the level of ill feeling that this has caused is is probably unrealistic although obviously i'd like that to be the case i'm pleased to see what councillor cross has been doing to try and bring people together but as far as i can see that rift is still very sore so this isn't going to go away for all those reasons i uh, will be voting to support the changes i appreciate that i i won't succeed in that tonight by the sounds of it However, I would I would suggest that as Councillor Barnett Ward has talked about monitoring and everybody's talking about monitoring and watching how this goes, we could if if the committee is minded to reject, it should at least have the the rejection should have a little bit more teeth on it. In that I would hope that officers could be instructed to come back with some credible alternative proposals that effectively do reach a compromise uh, for us to consider formally at, at our next committee in September. Um, so I would move that as an amendment to the rejection. If, 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 that, if that is the way the committee votes. Um, but over, overall, um, this problem is not going to go away. Um, there has been uh, po politicising of it uh, to an extent that a lot of residents have felt alienated. Um, and I, I, again, I'm not going to get into who's right and who's wrong and the levels of support around it. Um, but it's clear the division is real. Uh, and we need, as a traffic management committee, to, ma to manage traffic. And if it's going to become and continue to be a problem, then those restrictions that are currently in place, sadly for those residents who don't want them to be changed, uh, may well, in my view, have to be amended at some point. And we may as well grasp this nettle as, as soon as we can. Um, I'm, I haven't heard one resident or those who want the changes arguing it's about parking outside their home. They are genuinely concerned about the number of vehicles that fill up there and people changing position on the hour to get around the restrictions as they currently stand. And, and I think it's, a, it's an obvious loophole that uh, we will have to address, if not tonight, in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Council Mull, you indicate. Thank you very much. Um, more of an adjacent question, really, but I've heard from councillors and members of the public about anonymous responses to consultations and potentially bots and things. Is that something they wish to review about our consultation process? If we're not happy with that as a committee uh, about anonymous responses and potential um, way of, sort of orchestrating stuff, that's not really a for or against this proposal, but maybe that's something that we may want to consider in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Uh, Councillor Page. Do you just to pick up on that last uh, point, the council has a standard approach that operates across all consultations. And whilst I understand the point that's being uh, made about identifying people, there are restrictions um, placed upon what we can uh, require. Um, I have a lot of sympathy with the point, uh, a view that says that people emailing their objections from um, outside of Reading or even outside of the country, uh, as we saw, um, perhaps uh, don't carry the same legitimacy as those of local residents. Um, I'm quite happy to um, ask Michael Graham uh, to report further, but the, any changes that are made would have to apply across the council consistently and also in terms of our petitioning right that's built into our constitution um, and there may need to be appropriate uh, changes made um, there. Um, I would, the other point, I won't repeat, uh, I, I will be supporting um, the proposal to um, to reject the um, um, advertised scheme. Um, I, it, I'm surprised that Councillor Mitchell um, is going to press an amendment um, to bring a report back to the next meeting. The Shinfield Road scheme will not be implemented uh, by then. The whole purpose um, of comments made this evening is to monitor 
understand that there may be some displacement, but clearly until the Shinfield Road scheme has been fully implemented, which won't be until later uh, this year, and then there needs to be a time to monitor uh, that, it will be um, clearly into next year before we are in a position to properly assess the impact. So I would suggest to Councillor Mitchell that it would be uh, completely inappropriate uh, to bring forward uh, proposals and it's precisely the point that Councillor Barnett Ward made about not anticipating um, changes. I don't think there will be displacement because the people who are parking on Shinfield Road are parking as close to their uh, place of work as possible in an area that is unrestricted. They're not going to walk all the way into White Nights to come back out every one hour and 55 minutes to move their car around the mount. Um, as uh, Mr Bennett, I think, uh, rightly uh, pointed out. But again, I may be wrong. We need to monitor it, wait for the Shinfield Road scheme to be implemented later this year, have a period of assessment after that, obviously consultations with local uh, residents. So I would ask Councillor Mitchell if he is going to, but I'm not too sure whether he'll get a seconder for that, but um, I would suggest it would be appropriate to have that monitoring period once this scheme has been introduced. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, thank you, Councillor Page. All right, can we so, so move forward towards the vote? Uh, so are we sub? Sorry, just just to be clear, there's a A and a B to this. Are we are we just voting, or are we going to vote on them separately and speak on them separately? Yes, uh, we're just going to vote on the the amount, yep, yep. and then we're going to continue with the. the just rest checking. Of the chair. So can we have a, I, I see clear indication for rejection. Can we all uh, have a vote on that? Are we in agreement to reject the subcommittee? Can we have a hand up? I think that's anonymous, yeah. So that is rejected. So thank you. Uh, I will just say anybody for, so then for the scheme. For the scheme, so there's, okay, one. So the scheme is rejected as well. Chair, can we just make sure that the minute fully uh, records the need for monitoring after the uh, after the Shinfield Road scheme has been implemented and that obviously report brought back to the committee at an appropriate time? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, obviously, yeah. in consultation with local. Mr. Penn, you got that? Yeah. Yeah, noted. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to uh, we'll move on to the 2022A question B. This is Appendix Two. Now, councillors, normally I I take this as per award. I'm not going to go through all of them, so I, I'm, I'm sure you all had a little read and. Uh, uh, said there. So the first one we got is um, from Abbey Ward. So can yeah, I take agreed. agreed that one? Next, I've got four in Caversham, and uh, that's for a restriction review for Amisham Road. I'm not going to go through, so I'll, I'll look, ask Caversham councillors. Councillor Matt, you're in. Thanks, Chair. Um, we actually consulted residents on these ourselves as, as ward councillors, and um, there's a couple. Of, we're, we're minded to, you know, the, the Amersham Road one um, to go to um, statutory consultation, but in fact, all three of them. But um, Bryant's Avenue is more complicated. If you remove the, um, if we change or re remove the restrictions there, then um, it will potentially lead to other traffic issues exacerbating because it's a it's quite um, a congested road as it is but there's also speeding issues late at night which we we've, we've had a number of issues raised so we wanted to um perhaps explore that with you um after you know well it's in the consultation period um the primary avenue one if you the, we we had a couple of residents say that the the traffic there at busy times um it currently stacks back up into Rectory Road or possibly even into Priest Hill. Um, so if you, if we, we convert the doctor's permits into 
at residence permits, it may make the traffic worse. So a compromise is possibly suggested, but we prefer it to go to, I mean, they all need to go to statutory consultation, but we wanted to raise those concerns at this stage so that you are aware of it. Thank you, uh, Councillor Harris. Uh, James, uh, have you got? Yeah. No, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, we'll, we'll make those notes. And um, yeah, I've absolutely noticed on Bryant Avenue, and, and and you're likely aware of of the rather long-standing desire now for for a wider 20 mile an hour scheme as well. So, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, next, we have. Two in Caversham uh, restriction for Junction St Peter's Road. So I'm looking at the Caversham councillors. So I think that was. Oh, sorry, Caversham Heights. Yeah. Um, Chair, yeah. the um, I mean the the Tories walked out, but um, the Labour member for Caversham Heights supports these proposals. So I suggest we support them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sport. Mm. Right, we got the next five in Church Ward for the uh, extension double yellow lines. Uh, this is in Barnsdale, Banbury Garden. So, yes, uh, Councillor Smith, to support these, uh, Chair, and I uh, thank the officer for making changes to uh, the scheme at Poplar Gardens. Thank you very much. All right. Mr. Penman, you got those? Yeah. Uh, next, we got two in Coley, Argyll Street and Port Weir Close. Yeah, support the recommendations. Uh, Ward councillors work with residents in Port Weir Close, and we're in support, obviously, of those uh, those changes there. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gating. Well, uh, Emma Green, Ward Emma Green. We got five there, Henley Road, and where we? So I'm looking at the councillors. Councillor Mitchum? Yeah, no, no, we have no objections. Okay. Agreed. Uh, next ward we got is Cates Grove, Bolton Road and Bourne Avenue. Uh, I did get an email from Councillor Challenger. He's happy with the agreements. So these are agreed. Next ward we have is Kentwood. We have three in Kentwood, Armour Road and Kentwood Hill. I, looking at it, I did get an email from the local councillor. They're happy with the, uh, the changes there. So we all agree that one. Mr. Penn, yeah. Got those. Next ward we have is Norco Ward. We got uh, four on those, D Road and I did. You up here with those, Councillor Oskin? Yeah, agreed. Those good. Uh, we got six in now. Redlands, Alexander Road, up Redlands Road, Redlands. Councillor White. Thank you, Chair. I've talked to the Green Redlands councillors and also the Labour Redlands councillor uh, on the. Eldon Terrace scheme. Uh, we've been talking to residents further in the road and one of their concerns is cars travelling quickly down the road. Uh, if we remove a section of the road that people can park in uh, and make that double yellow lines, it does indeed improve the access for the one resident uh, who has asked for it, but it also speeds up the traffic in the road. Uh, we think that there's a better solution uh, exploring, for example, putting some permit parking on the road where there's currently single yellow line. Uh, at this stage, I, we, we're not going to do that uh, for this round of uh, the programme. So I propose we remove this scheme from the programme and put it into the next one so it could be further worked on. Uh, the Green Councillors definitely agree. I don't know if Councillor Cross wants to comment any further if I have sort of summarised that reasonably. 
So, so, thank, no. thank, thank you, Councillor Ellis, for your comments from the, the back there. It's uh, I, could hear, I could hear some mumbling can, can and uh, you, rudeness, but I can't quite tell what's going on. Can we keep control on that one, please? Yeah, councillors, behave yourself. Uh, Mr. Penman, so do you get... Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so, so certainly, um, Councillor White's uh, already raised the bays um, that, that would potentially want to, to have further down the road. Certainly, that's something we can add as a request for the next weight and restriction review programme. Clearly, we're too far forward now to, to take a decision and investigate that. Um, and the, I guess the only point I would raise is obviously that there, there is a problem that's been raised now. Um, to put it in the next programme, we're probably looking at yep, subject to decisions, there being a further 12 months of this problem. So it's just to make the subcommittee aware that, that this problem exists. Um, and from an officer perspective, we think that this scheme would overcome that, whilst also acknowledging um, the, the speed concerns that have been raised. Um, and Chair, if I may as well, just briefly, there's um, just, uh, I just wanted to make the subcommittee aware of a slight uh, correction on one drawing which relates to Redlands, which is page 55, um, and this is De Beauvoir Road. Um, we've got what I've nicknamed a rogue line uh, appear on the drawing. Uh, so it's just to clarify the top left label should only be pointing at the bay to the north of Carnarvon Road and not to the south. So my apologies to the committee. Uh, I just wanted to raise that and clarify that it will be corrected um, for subsequent drawings and consultation. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor White, you indicated, sorry. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and th thanks for that correction on the de Beauvoir scheme, uh, James, much appreciated. Uh, just, just to point out that the resident on Eldon Terrace doesn't currently have a white access protection marking, and so one of those, he, he could obviously request one of those, uh, and, that, and that would improve the situation for him in, in the short term. It, it might even resolve the problem. Oh, Mr. Penn, you not got that? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Right, we'll move on to Southcote Ward, uh, Circuit Lane. We've got three of those. Councillor Ennis. Thank you, Chair. Um, definitely agree with all three uh, and look forward to the consultation. I would like to offer the Greens uh, a template of how to talk to residents without causing undue trouble on the Silchester Road one where we listen to residents and put it in and then we can listen to them again <laughs> and uh, without any undue political problems and hopefully we'll get a decent consultation on that so very much thanks thank you to network management for understanding that situation and and hopefully the changes will come via the consultations thank you thank you councillor Ernest James. And next we have Talus, Talus Ward. We got seven in those. So I did get agreement. Sorry, apologize. Sorry, it's my phone. Uh, yes, uh, seven in Talus. So I, that, yeah, Councillor uh, Moore. The Tarhurst Ward Council support all of the officer, officer recommendations for Tarhurst Ward. Thank you. Thank you. James, you got this. And we have one in Thames Ward, uh, Brian Savigny. Councillor yep. Adele Chair, Ward. thank you. I will just absorb, uh, uh, observe that by my reckoning, Thames comes before Tarhurst in the alphabet. <laughs> um, this, uh, we're happy to support the, the Cavisham Ward councillors on this. Right. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next ward we have is Whitley. Uh, we already done uh, Blandford uh, and the other one, so yeah, we've got three of those. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with the officer's recommendations. It's just to um, flag the Blanford Road, which has been removed from the programme, and, and just to confirm with James that he received our email comments surrounding Meadowcroft. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Penner, yeah, you got those. 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Lynn. Yes, that, um, so there's a, a new proposal that will be going into the next, or a new request into the next programme as, as requested. Right, thank you. That's the waiting description. Next we have now is agenda item six, which is on page 75. We have three of these. So uh, the first one is uh, Park Lane Junior School. James, would you introduce? Sorry, Chair. I don't know if Chris Maddox was going to be. Okay. Chris, can Hi you there. introduce her? Evening. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, there's three reports, as you say. Um, they set out the progress uh, with delivery of the first three school street schemes in Reading. Uh, so, essentially, the school street scheme uh, shuts the road directly outside of the school. Uh, during the morning drop off and evening pick up times uh, to encourage walking and cycling to and from school. Um, so as you said, the first one is uh, Park Lane Junior School. So that's uh, Downing Road and Lambourne Close. Uh, second one is Wilson Primary, that's Wilson Road. And the, the third school is Thameside Primary School and that's Harley Road in Caversham. Um, so the these road closures for all three of the schemes um, have been undertaken through something called an experimental traffic regulation order. Um, they're valid for 18 months and they provide an opportunity for objections to be submitted to the council during that full 18 month period. Um, so, so, so that's been the case uh, for these three schemes. Um, as set out within the reports, uh, we have received one objection for each of the schemes, uh, the details of which are in the reports. Um, and we are asking um, the subcommittee uh, to obviously take account of these objections and, and the concerns raised, uh, but also the benefits of the three schemes um, to encourage children to walk and cycle to school um, and obviously hopefully to then take that uh, behaviour on board uh, later in life as well. Um, and we're seeking authority to make the experimental TROs uh, permanent for these three schemes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adele Ward, you indicated. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's always good to see a School Streets report come forwards. Uh, it's very close to my heart. This is something that uh, we first discussed back when I was Chair of the Clean Air and Safer Transport Forum. And it's another example of the importance of consulting widely on things before you bring them forward. We spent a lot of time talking to people and understanding the parameters around these schemes before we launched our first trials. And these are our first trials. They're now, uh, they've been in place for some time. I'm really pleased to see uh, how they are impacting positively the way people are traveling to school and perceptions of safety. I recognize there are concerns about staffing with volunteers. I would encourage people to volunteer to do this. It's a lovely way to support your community. Thameside school scheme is within my ward. Uh, I was concerned when it first came forward that the extent of the closure was too small and that it might cause problems on Wolsey Road. Uh, I tend to go through there on my way to work right at the end of the school street time and I've not seen the problems that I was worried about. So I think that scheme is working well. And I hope that other schools across Reading will have a look at what's happening with these three schools, visit the school street schemes, and it's school street schemes, I should say, and uh, see whether they could benefit their schools as well. I think it's a fantastic uh, proposal, school street. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ward. Uh, Councillor Hacker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to echo what Councillor Barnett Ward said, but in particular in relation to Wilson Primary School, where I'm a governor. It's lovely to be able to give the children who are starting to walk to school in year five and six that little bit of extra confidence and safety once they've got across Oxford Road that the way up to the school is perfectly safe. And if you're a bit of a, you know, a nervous parent, you can see them across the road and off they go up Wilson, starting those first steps towards independence. But school streets like this benefit wider than just the primary school involved. A lot of children walk to and from local secondary schools and use Wilson Road because quite frankly it's one of the least steep parts of the hill um, and I use it when I walk to Prospect Park and it really is heartwarming to see on my way to work the one day a week when I go into the office the parents stood at the, the, the bottom of Wilson Road having a nice chat with each other but also with the other parents coming up the road as well and that lovely welcome as you're going to school from the little group of people is, is quite wonderful and it has changed attitudes to how you get to school um, and I used to walk when I went to Wilson and my children did as well and it's lovely to see this encouraging more people to be active on their way get their blood and brain pumping as well so I'm glad to see it and I'd love to see more across the town. 
Thank you, Councillor Hacker. Uh, Councillor Moore. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to speak on the Parkland Junior School, School Streets. Um, although we have seen an increase in parking issues on Beechwood Avenue, which is opposite the school, that is a private road and that does uh, cause problems of its own nature. I do, I do broadly support making this permanent. I think having active travel for school, uh, for school children and parents, and especially around, I'd echo the comment around building habits early is a wonderful thing. Uh, so we'll be supporting this. I also just want to uh, make an, uh, a correction to some spelling, if that's right. I do apologise. Uh, I think it's an autocorrect error, but page 77, 4.6, it says, the survey has also identified an increase in cars parked in the principal pub car park, and it should be the Prince pub car park. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor White. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, fully support uh, school streets. It'd be great to see more of them. I just wanted to ask on the enforcement, because it, obviously it's it's all not enforcement, on the, on the volunteering, volunteer uh, component of them, uh, the Crescent Road school street does struggle to get volunteers. And I was wondering if there was any update on using camera enforcement as is used elsewhere in the country uh, to make it easier to get a, st a school street up and running and keep them going, because obviously there's a big, a big push, push of enthusiasm at the moment. Uh, but I, I would spe expect the, the sort of the enthusiasm to, to die down as often happens with these things. But it'd be great if there was some camera enforcement, which, which would make it a lot easier. Anybody else? No? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Penn, you go on there. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. I think the, the report notes that we're going to be exploring uh, enforcement opportunities in the future and alternative ways that that could be um, could be done. So, yeah, that's that's a work in progress. Um, I think the first step was to uh, to trial these. And I think we can say that these have been a, a resounding success, which is fantastic. Uh, next stage is to to encourage more uptake and, and explore other options for doing it. And, and yeah, potentially some that are less reliant on volunteers all the time as well so yeah the report notes that and and yeah absolutely um know your comments thank you all right council page you know. can i just <clears throat> take the opportunity councillor white's asked a question about camera enforcement um that relates to something known as moving traffic offenses um which we have formally applied for and our application went in a few weeks ago I'm informed today that Reading is one of 12 authorities that are likely to be designated in the first tranche for those powers. We were promised designation by the end of May. Um, that is slipping, as with all things at the DFT, delay is almost built in genetically. And we're told now that the earliest it could be July. Um, but uh, we are told that Reading is in that first batch of authorities to receive approval. Once we receive approval, we will then proceed with certain priority sites. School streets are not amongst those priority sites at the moment, um, but obviously once we have those powers, we can then uh, reflect on further um, locations within the borough. And there may be a case for some um, to be uh, uh, considered for camera enforcement along with many other locations within the borough. But at the moment, even if we wanted to, we don't even have the powers uh, to do that. So as soon as those powers are given to us, um, we can then reflect on borough-wide priorities. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Page. Uh, so moving forward now, uh, I take it that uh, everybody's agreement with Park Lane and also Thameside Wilson School. All agreed with all the three schemes. Thank you. All right, item seven on the agenda, page 93 is active, active travel fund trench two consultation on Shinfield Road. James, oh, Chris, Chris, can I yes. ask you to, Chris, uh, we're having difficulty hearing you. Could, could I ask you to speak up a bit, please? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Apologies for that. Um, yeah. OK, so uh, this um, I know this this um, this has been referenced previously in your discussions uh, around the mount. But um, yeah, this this report sets out progress with development of the active travel fund tranche two scheme. 
uh, which is essentially um, segregated cycle lanes on Shinfield Road uh, from Christchurch Green to Shinfield Rise, the local centre there, um, and also pedestrian enhancements along that route as well. Um, so, so in order for this scheme to be a success, then um, an essential part of it is, is the implementation of these new traffic uh, restrictions um, in the form of double yellow lines, um, which would be along the length of the, the scheme. Um, to ensure that you know cars um, don't park within the, the cycle uh, lanes. Um, so we've undertaken statutory consultation on these restrictions uh, between 12th of May and the 2nd of June. Um, again, the uh, the comments and objections um, are in Appendix 1 to the report. Uh, we received four objections, uh, 17 kind of um, uh, comments in support and then three kind of neutral comments. Um, so, so, so again, taking you know this this feedback into account, both the objections but also the um, comments in support, um, then we're seeking approval from the subcommittee uh, to approve the proposed traffic restrictions on Shinfield Road, um, and to make the traffic regulation order to ensure these restrictions can be enforced. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. You indicate. Thank you, Chair. It's Councillor Hornsby Smith, but you know, thank you. Um, I, I want to welcome this scheme. I think it's a fantastic scheme. Uh, and this is obviously the fact that the residents have come out so strongly in support of it is telling in itself. And I can confirm that the residents I spoke to during the election campaign all the way along Shinfield Road were very happy that we were uh, going ahead with this. I think the 17.4 speaks, uh, speaks volumes about what, what this is about. It is uh, one of the steps we need to take in order to, to deliver the wider scheme of, of the segregated cycle lanes, and that will form part of our strategic network of cycle lanes and really improve the sustainability of Reading. So I, I very much welcome uh, this report and uh, would like to suggest that it is uh, approved. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Page, you have anything to add? No? Okay, right. So, can we, are we in, uh, the subcommittee is in agreement on 2.1, 2.2 recommended action? Are we agreeing? Yeah. Okay. Agenda item eight is Cox and Wyman proposal for alteration for waiting restriction, which is on page 103. Ah, oh, Darren. Darren, welcome. Thank you, Chair. Uh, th this report sets out proposals for the site previously known as the Cox and Wyman print works. Um, on Cardiff Road and includes alterations on or to restrictions on Addison Road, Meadow Road and Milford Road, of which they surround the, the development on three sides. Um, as set out in the report, the development is progressing with some properties now occupied and, and that has caused some minor issues in terms of the, the restrictions not being in place, but but has been able to be to kind of dealt with through through other means in, intermediately. Um, Members may be aware that the development was required to provide a number of shared user bays around the site, as well as introduce some parking restrictions at junctions to facilitate access to the development. Given that the development is occupied, we are at a point at which these restrictions are necessary to aid movement by residents and also to formalise the, the on-street parking in the vicinity um, that these, excuse me, these four proposals are set out in the report. Um, we are asking the, the committee to permit permit officers to carry out the statutory consultation. We need to advertise these restrictions as detailed in the report. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Barnett Ward. Uh, thank you, Chair. So this is in Thames Ward, but up until a few weeks ago, it was in Abbey Ward. Um, so I would like to thank the Abbey Ward councillors for the work they've done with residents, um, consulting them and making sure that what's being brought forward here uh, is something that is supported by residents, uh, which we know, um, and I'd like, therefore like to endorse the recommendations. Unfortunately, with this report, though, we don't actually have the drawings for the consultation. It looks like these are planning diagrams, uh, which it would be helpful if you could perhaps, after the meeting, circulate to the committee what will actually be put out as part of the consultation, because it's not going to be this, I think. 
Mr. Penn. Yeah, thank you. We can we can work with uh, with Darren and the team to produce some some clearer drawings. So yeah, we'll make sure that happens before consultation and that they are circulated beforehand. Thank you. Uh, don't see any more indication. Uh, are we in agreement with the recommended action in 2.1 to 2.6? Agreed. Good. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item nine, which is Sill Norcote Road zebra crossing. Uh, result for statutory consultation, uh, page 111. Mr. Penn, are you introduced? Thank you, Chair. Uh, so we've undertaken a, a further statutory consultation for the proposed location of this uh, local SIL funded uh, zebra crossing proposal. So it's a slight alteration from original, um, which uh, unfortunately we've, we've had some, some difficulties in, in squeezing, wrong word, in, in fitting this zebra crossing around other infrastructures such as uh, nearby parking bays uh, and also a bus stop. Um, so we believe this proposal um, will deliver everything that was, uh, that was requested un under the scheme without removing uh, on-street parking. Uh, we've received 17 um, items of feedback for support uh, and eight objections, uh, of which one of those objections was uh, was overcome essentially because it related to them objecting if it would remove on-street parking. So officers are recommending that we proceed and then we can proceed to delivery planning for the scheme. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Penman. Councillor Moore, you indicate. Thank you very much. I, I do support this proposal. I'm just wondering if it's possible to get an amendment. I don't actually know if it is possible, but uh, some years ago, the bus stop was moved on that road anyway, and the bus shelter was removed. I wonder if it's possible in this um, change to reinstate the bus shelter because the bus stop is going to be moved. Oh, however, I realise space is tight and I can see Councillor Page shaking his head, uh, but I thought I would ask anyway. Mr. Penman. I think it's very well. Uh, for, firstly, I don't think the funding is going to stretch to that, so it would have to be an additional. In any case, in terms of funding, it would have to be an additional desirable option. However, I do not believe that there's going to be space to put the bus stop, and, and with its proximity to an alleyway as well, that could also um, cause some visibility issues. So it's unlikely, but I will certainly take that away um, and and discuss with colleagues. Thank you, Councillor Page. You Thank, thank Mr. Pemmer for saying what I was going to say. I have looked in this site in more detail than perhaps many others recently due to the initial pushback from local residents. And I can understand the basis because there was an initial proposed loss of on-street parking. The solution we've come up with retains the existing parking provision, but the location of the bus stop where it is um, is it probably one of the narrowest points on the pavement along there and for that reason uh, that was the reason I was shaking my head not that I have some magic power just to do a thumbs down um, but uh, um, the, the, the configuration there would make it very very difficult to incorporate a shelter. We would normally look um, to do that but I think this location is very much compromised. Um, I give credit to the officers for being able to get the scheme design that delivers the zebra crossing in the location it does. Um, and so inevitably uh, the compromise and the give in this location is the is going to be the fact that providing a shelter uh, would probably be pretty impossible. But having said that, uh, James has volunteered to go out there with this tape measure and uh, do the necessary and, and if it is possible then obviously we'll look at it but I think it's highly unlikely and what's more the funding available for this is funded out of the local SIL element which has been budgeted solely to provide the crossing and not any ancillary but uh, um, if there were the possibility I'm sure we could make a bid for funding but let's let's have a look at the uh, get, let's get confirmation about the uh, uh, the feasibility. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, committee is happy with the recommendation action. Yeah. Thank you. We'll move on to item 10, which is on page 125. This is Active Travel Fund Trench 1. Uh, 
can I ask is it Mr. Penman, you introduce them? Thank you, Chair. Um, so back in 2020, uh, during the height of the pandemic, uh, the, the, the Council agreed to install some active travel uh, schemes as part of the, uh, the, the government's uh, emergency active travel tranche one funding. We've heard about tranche two um, earlier today. Those schemes were temporary um, and still are. And, uh, and now is, is a good opportunity to bring those back now that uh, thankfully the worst of the, the pandemic is over uh, for a decision on what's, what happens next. Uh, the officer recommendation, um, the majority of, of the schemes that we delivered, so these are listed as uh, schemes at one to, to five in the report. So George Street over Reading Bridge, that's on Southampton Street, Silver Street, Mount Pleasant and Whitley Street area, Oxford Road, Christchurch Road and um, some, some minor enhancements on Redlands Road. They can be adopted as permanent schemes with very little additional work. And that is the officer recommendation that they are considered as a permanent, um, a permanent feature in Reading. Sidmouth Street does require a traffic regulation order uh, because this gives over road space to a two way cycle lane and essentially makes the, uh, the street one way to general traffic. The officer recommendation is that we proceed to statutory consultation uh, for that traffic regulation order. It's currently under a temporary order and that will expire in October. So we'd like to proceed to statutory consultation to seek views from everyone, all users, those who may be for and against, uh, to, to seek a view on whether that should be a permanent feature or not. Um, and the final point, just to, to labour a point in, in the report, uh, we accept that, that these aren't necessarily gold standard schemes, but we didn't have gold standard scheme budgets and we certainly didn't have um, that level of, uh, of time, um, considering the pressures we had at the time. Um, but from an officer perspective, we think that they're very important and they provide a good foundation then to build on with future bids, which uh, we're demonstrating we are successful in achieving. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councillor Paul Gitting. Yes, thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. In fact, Mr. Mr. Penman actually in his, his final remarks there is, is summed up a lot of what I was going to say. Um, the, if people cast their minds back when the schemes were implemented, it was right to the height of the COVID pandemic and the a lot of people were cycling on the road and at the time and you know it was a, there was a boom in cycling um you know as, as, and that was, that's obviously a good thing i think and and some of that is has carried through now into more people regularly cycling within reading and the other criteria for the schemes is in terms of the funding was that we could implement them quickly um and that they did take up road space so you know, if you cast your mind back uh, a while, the idea that we would take up a, a lane of, say, Reading Bridge would would have seemed, you know, really quite challenging uh, in the circumstances that, that were adopted the pre-pandemic. Yet here we are today, uh, hopefully going to give the go-ahead to, um, to to that and, and other schemes um, at the top of the Not Oxford Road uh, and, and other places where, we, where we've done that. And although, you know, these, some of these schemes are white lines painted on, on, on roads, they do take up road space and, and they are, have, have been used. I think it is important to stress, as you say, though, they're not gold standard. Um, they were done quickly and with very limited funding and the aspiration certainly of, 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 the, of the Labour Council and certainly through my committee, the SEP committee and through the CAST Forum, which I now chair, the aspiration will be that these become, we can implement gold standard schemes that we can get the funding from the Department of Transport. We, we're getting the funding for Shinfield Road, which was earlier in the agenda. We've got the Bath Road scheme was about to be consulted on, which is another one of the schemes we've worked up and hopefully we will be able to increase the amount of segregated facilities throughout the town, uh, particularly on the Oxford Road, which I know uh, Councillor Hacker um, is a battle ward council and actually is a Coley ward council. Now bits of my new ward do actually take in the Oxford Road. And we do need to make, do some work on there to make it better for cyclists and, and pedestrians as, as well as, part of a, as a part of a wider scheme, which hopefully we can secure funding for. And I just want to say something about Sidmouth Street. I mean, if you look at the figures, it's not terribly widely used, but in terms of the actual modelling for future schemes, I think it's really important to implement that sort of two-way 
cycle scheme in 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 in, in that part of the of the world which I think will be used but with better linkage and the report does refer to that we can link it to the um to 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 the to the, you know more to, more off the IDR bit and also from the uh, the canal side path I think that will, will make 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 it better use but I think it's important that we we put that scheme in because it shows what can be done and some of the schemes that we will implement right across the borough will use that as modelling so I think it's important we'll see what the consultation says about that and that will obviously come back to this committee thank you chair thank you councillor Gidding uh, councillor Sarah Hacker Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, to echo what, what Councillor Gitting said, I think yeah, it's important to, to remember that these are just the first steps towards changes along the Oxford Road before the pandemic came and, and changed the way we lived and, and changed the things we could get done. We were you know, getting quite well through the Oxford Road Corridor Study, which is looking at the Oxford Road and putting the residents at the heart of how it works, as opposed to at the moment, uh, tr cars and lorries and um, things like that. And I would ask officers, now we are post-election, um, to get the Oxford Corridor Study back up and running, if possible, with our new members from Coley, who do have that little stretch of the Oxford Road. And so we can put some ambitious plans in place to really transform the Oxford Road and make it a safer place for pedestrians and cyclists, as well as our very much loved buses. Um, but otherwise, I welcome these these changes and making them permanent. But we do need to it'll be a little bit more ambitious in the future and make the place um, a nicer environment to be. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rob White. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, Green Councillors support cycling and we support making these schemes permanent. Uh, it's noted that there are some improvements because, yeah, I, I think as James Penman recognised, uh, more can be done to uh, make these schemes even better for cyclists. On, on Sidmouth Street, though, I, I, as a fairly keen cyclist myself uh, who pools around east, south and in, into the centre Reading, where most, most of my cycle journeys, I have to say I've not found Sidmouth Street particularly useful. I haven't found a cyclist that thinks Sidmouth Street is particularly useful. Uh, if, if the council does a statutory consultation on Sidmouth Street uh, now, then I, I think it's going to be roundly rejected it would need to be very clear exactly what link to get people to support it i think it would be need to be very clear exactly what the linkages are that are going to make it into a far more attractive route and, and when those linkages are, are going to go going to go in i think otherwise it's going to be roundly rejected as a, a sort of a route to nowhere you get to the bottom of it you're thrust into multiple lanes of traffic heading in multiple directions it just isn't a, a nice route to use um, so yeah I'm not, not keen on it at the moment and i think you're really going to need to do some convincing with some detail on how it could be uh, improved. Uh, so yes, yeah, supporting everything and, uh, so, so, and supporting going to consultation on Sidmouth Street. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Page. Uh, Chair, um, James Penman's rightly uh, reminded us of the context that the uh, these schemes were introduced. We were given um, allocation by the Department for Transport with an instruction that we proceed to implement these without consultation. That was a requirement of the grant funding, not advice, not a request, an instruction. And that if we were going to um, make them permanent or those requiring tra uh, temporary traffic regulation orders, then we would consult uh, later. And that is the consultation that we are now doing. <laughs> Uh, Grant Shapps, uh, with the masterly um, amnesia that, that he and his colleagues displayed, then criticised councils for not having consulted, omitting to refer to his own guidance in his own foreword that told us precisely not to consult. Um, but we mustn't be too curmudgeonly. The DFT has been generous in terms of the funding allocated to Reading. And the reason they've been generous, and Councillor Gittings and others have referred to this, is because we took the bold step to deliver 
Um, with one exception that went wrong in Lower Caversham, we delivered these schemes that are uh, listed in items um, one to six. Seven was the one, uh, and we can't get everything right all the time. And we accepted very quickly that it wasn't working and we pulled the Gosbrook Road, Westfield Road scheme. We explained to the department, they accepted that. And the other schemes have gone in and are working well. And uh, uh, it, on the basis of the success of those schemes, the department then allocated us funding for the Shinfield Road uh, scheme. Again, about a million, 1.3 million or something. Um, and then a further allocation recently for the Bath Road Castle Hill scheme. Reading has received proportionately more than virtually any other urban authority um, in the country. And that's because of our commitment to, and I'm going to use a word that I know Councillor White doesn't possess, that's vision. And it's called a vision for the town that can only be delivered incrementally. And this is something else that Green councillors deliberately choose to ignore. You aren't going to suddenly overnight overlay across Reading segregated cycle lanes on every single road in our local cycling walking infrastructure plan. And that's where the information is. Uh, Councillor White. Clearly you haven't read it because it actually has vision and as a Green Councillor I realise uh, that that's something that has some difficulty um, but we on this side have worked on that plan precisely so that when the time comes for the Department for Transport to invite bids we say here's a bid for a particular scheme and this is the overall context within which that sits and the Sidber Street link does sit a bit odd at the moment if you choose to ignore the plan that we have for that wider connectivity connectivity that would extend all the way down the London Road and one of the schemes that we consulted uh, on at a high level was an inbound uh, lane from uh, Sutton Seeds all the way down the London Road, right the way down to Southampton Street and Crown Street. And we consulted on that and we got two thirds, no, 60 percent support on average for all of those schemes. And they sit there at a high level for opportunities to bid for government funds, which is why I am confident that in further rounds of bidding, um, we will be able to submit with some confidence. However, the good news is that under another allocation, the bus service improvement plan, we have potential funding to deliver um, an inbound bus lane from Sutton Seeds along London Road um, and along into town. And that whilst it wouldn't deliver a segregated cycle lane would allow cyclists uh, to use that facility at least between Sutton Seeds um, and Cemetery Junction. Now we have much further work to do on that. The DFT has yet to sign off all the detail around the bus service improvement uh, plan, but there are there is a real potential that the London Road um, will be a candidate for early um, priority work to improve cycling opportunities. So the status of Sydney Street um, is very important as one of those key links between the London Road and the north of the town. And we will certainly in the publicity that we give around this consultation draw attention to that. But it would help uh, if Councillor White and his colleagues do support cycling, and he says they do, they do perhaps rather than the sort of whinging we get at meetings such as tonight, we might see on his tweets and social media some reference to the bigger picture that exists that we're working to deliver and perhaps some positive comments from him rather than his traditional negativity would help us deliver uh, this scheme and others. So Chair, I very much welcome 
um, the recommendation tonight and look forward to engaging particularly with uh, those individuals who think that Sidmer Street is a cycle lane to nowhere on the real potential for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Page. Uh, Councillor Moore, you indicated. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I was interested, but not surprised to hear about what Michael Green, I mean, Grant Shapps have been saying. Um, but uh, I do support this. Um, and as an agile practitioner professionally, I support iteration. I think it's incredibly important. Um, so my question um, is, it sounds like tranche three is going to be Castle Hill and Bath Road. So what are the plans for tranche four, five and six, if and when we get funding opportunities? Councillor, uh, uh, Councillor James Penman, do you want? Uh, sorry, James, do you want to comment? Um, sorry, Chair, I'm, I'm not in a position to, uh, to to answer that at the moment. I don't have that information, but we can. Okay, Councillor Page, sorry. as a lead member, can you? we have we have a number of schemes as to what what forms uh, the tranche is four or five. We don't even know whether there is going to be tranche four or five. There will be future bidding opportunities. What I can say to, to uh, Councillor Moore is that the schemes that we've already consulted on at a high level um, will form the basis of those bids. So the London Road, Crown Street and Southampton Street linkages are a high priority. Which one would be submitted over the other we haven't uh, uh, determined, um, but uh, they sit as a high priority along with the other aspirations within the local cycling walking infrastructure plan. But the key point to make is that the department often sets a very tight bidding uh, deadline, sometimes only a month or so, and they will, are looking for schemes that already have had an element of work done to them. And those high level schemes that I've referred to have that level of work done, whereas others have yet to be even uh, progressed to that level of, uh, of detail. Thank you, Councillor Page. Uh, so can we move on for, uh, are we agreement with the recommended action? Agreed? Yeah, agreed. Thank you. All right. Moving on to agenda item 11. It's page 187, uh, digital parking permit pilot scheme. Right. Steph Maxwell, are you on the line? I am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm I'm the project manager who has been managing this project, working closely with my colleagues in parking services, legal and communications. Um, I apologise, but my parking services colleagues can't be here tonight, so I'll do my best on their behalf. Um, our report is seeking approval from the committee to undertake a statutory consultation for an amendment to the Lower Caversham Traffic Regulation Order. In short, that means taking out the requirement to display a physical permit on vehicles. This will enable us to fully develop and implement a digital permits pilot project following the September Traffic Management Subcommittee when we would bring the findings and the feedback back to you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Page. Chair, can I commend this uh, report to colleagues? Um, it's been a while in the uh, uh, making um, and uh, uh, we on this side were very clear that rather than introduce a big bang across the whole borough and certainly the feedback from other authorities such as Bristol that have already gone down a digital uh, route is that a trial um, is the way forward so that we can uh, more closely monitor um, the implementation and obviously um, as with the trials we did around food waste um, which proved uh, very successful, uh, the trials that is, in, in, in informing the later rollout, so too with this uh, trial um, as well. Um, it offers the opportunity, obviously, for much greater flexibility around particularly the use of visitor permits. Um, and currently the scratch cards issued on a half day basis, you 
whether a person is visiting for one hour or half a day, the card is used. Um, the allocation of hours that will be um, uh, available um, um, in, in blocks of hours, not books, as is made clear in paragraph 4.13, offers much greater flexibility um, and better value uh, for uh, local residents. Um, so I won't say uh, more than that, Chair, other than to also just acknowledge, um, and I know is sitting in the public gallery, that Peter Seymour, kindly from the Motorcycle Action Group, has emailed both yourself and myself and uh, Councillor Hornsby-Smith um, about the status of um, motorbikes in terms of the pilot project, but also in the longer term. And I, what I can undertake, whilst I can't give um, an answer to all these questions um, this evening, I will uh, firstly acknowledge receipt of the email and ensure that it is fed in to the process that we are now going forward on in terms of the pilot um, so that that can be fully incorporated into the feedback to this subcommittee in a few months time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Page. Councillor White, you indicated. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, we, we, Green Councillors definitely support uh, the pilot of electronic permits. We, th we think that would be a step in the right direction. It would give people more uh, flexibility, especially with the visitor permits. I, I was slightly re reading the explanation of how the visitor permits will work, though. Uh, I think I found a bit confusing. Uh, and uh, I, I, I might be stupid, I'll fully accept that, but I, I think it isn't as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. I thought the number of hours uh, for a half day permit would be 12, a full day permit would be 24, and so that would be time up by the number of books to, to get, I think it gets to uh, 480 hours, but the way it's been implemented, uh, it, it's 240 hours, but uh, I think uh, I think a half day, six hours, a full day is 12 hours. So it, it is a bit confusing. I also queried how it was going to work uh, with uh, the officer, Stephanie Maxwell, and got a response back uh, along the lines of the overnight parking is going to be, if you get there late in the evening, a person will be able to book their friend in on the system, but it won't use any of their credits up. So it, if the email is correct, there's unlimited overnight parking. Uh, so I'd, 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 I'd like to, I'd hope that, that it would be uh, explored a bit further before being implemented or maybe the email is, is slightly wrong. Uh, but I, I fully support the trial. I think that's definitely the way that we learn about what's going to work and what isn't going to work. Uh, I would just query the, the, the exactly how the visitor permit hours uh, is going to work. Happy to supply that email to anyone that would like to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I ask Stephen Maxwell, do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, I will do. I, I, I think um, there does there need to be some more clarity on, on the hours and the way that they will work. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be contacting my parking services colleagues to iron that out. So any details that I get will be forwarded on to everybody so that everybody is clear about how it would work. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moore, you indicated. Thank you. I absolutely support this. I think it's absolutely a step in the right direction and really good we're doing a pilot project of it. Uh, one thing I did have a concern about, and this is highlighted in the report and hopefully the pilot will, will tease this out, is a potential increase in complaints uh, about people who are parking, who are deemed to be parking illegally and having no insight about whether they are or not. And hopefully the pilot will try and work out what numbers those will be, but I do have a bit of concern about sort of complaint numbers into our customer services team on that and how we we might seek to mitigate that in the future. Thank you. Uh, do you want to any response to that, Council? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, whilst whilst I, I put the disclaimer that this isn't in my service area directly, I, I am aware of the of the background of this and I think once once you move to digital you have the option of of, of a lot of other 
ways of, of checking efficiently um, and one of those that I know has been um, looked at in the past is about using camera vehicle that can do drive by activities when it's not doing say red route enforcement etc that can then do a quick scan of number plates and feed intelligence back to officers on the ground um, so it's just one of a number of ways but as soon as you've got information in the digital realm you can do a lot more in it without having someone physically having to walk the street and check um, every number plate so I think that's one of a number of options that, that are being explored and uh, and again this trial will tease that out and provide a bit of intelligence about just how high that level of abuse is because it, it may not be it may not be an issue at all but um, yes yeah, certainly acknowledge that comment and that will be fed back as well and we can perhaps expand on that um, in the report in September. Thank you Mr Penman. Uh, Councillor Mitchell. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think the point you were making was about other residents thinking, does that car have a permit or not? And yeah. they, they don't have the means to check. They just see the car. So yeah. that could lead to further complaints, perhaps wrong, but nevertheless could lead to that. Am I right? That's what I meant. Yeah, so that would be one area of concern. I was also not sure about the um, extra implementation of any new software costs involved. But in principle, this is absolutely the way forward. It's the future. Um, uh, the introduction of digital for other aspects of driver car use, such as ta tax discs, has worked well. Um, I see that people's satisfaction levels are high. And if this goes any fur you know, further towards helping residents uh, park uh, efficiently, and effectively on a, on a more granular level as well. That's that's good too. Um, so yes, we we absolutely support that. Um, and and uh, um, yeah, the trial period is right, and it also could bring in useful data, or will bring, as the report notes, useful data for the impl possible future implementation of uh, other permit types in future as well. So I think I think this gives us a good, assuming the the trial goes well, which I, I'm confident it will. This gives us a good basis to go forward in as modern a way as possible. Thank right, you. Thank you. Councillor Page. Um, Chair, I'd be grateful if Councillor White shared whatever email exchange he was referring to, because I haven't seen it and I'm, I'm not entirely clear as to what point that he's uh, raising. If he's raising about the calculation of overnight hours within the allocation, um, that is something that, that uh, um, I'm, I'm happy to uh, uh, take away and discuss with officers. Uh, the cost side uh, through you to Councillor Mitchell is set out on uh, page what bottom of page 192, paragraph 10.1. I mean, the, the, the costs of this trial are relatively minimal and the costs for wider rollout are already um, essentially uh, contained within the existing budgets because the introduction of the uh, of this has been um, anticipated for um, some while. Um, the final point um, that I would make about enforcement, it, this is the real concern that some of us have had. I've taken some persuading to get to the current point and uh, uh, my former colleague uh, Tony Jones and I um, you could call us Luddites or dinosaurs, were, uh, still are perhaps, um, uh, remain to be convinced that the issue of reassuring local residents um, in terms of the uh, sustainability and credibility of a, uh, of a parking scheme is important. Um, and James is quite right, James Penman is quite right, that the existing mobile vehicle can be used to identify potential um, unauthorised vehicles, but we can't serve tickets through that route. We still require a manual service because the law uh, requires that. The vehicles can only be used to serve tickets in terms of red routes and I think school keep clear markings and one or two other specific um, cases. Um, I have yet to be convinced that we as an authority could not introduce some element of a, on our website that enables a person to check by entering a vehicle registration number whether that car has a residence permit. If you and I can go onto the DVLA website and find out whether a car is taxed or insured anywhere in this country, 
then we should be able to find out whether a car in Reading is entitled to a residence parking permit. The GDPR implications are no different. You're not asking for the name of the person, you're not asking for the owner or anything else, simply has that car got a permit? And I'm sure that that can be delivered. I have raised this with officers. I've had somewhat equivocal replies. But when you point to the what the government websites allow you to do, then there's a, mm, a well, we'll look at it. So that's something. And that would be an important part. If a resident could go in and enter a vehicle registration number and be reassured that that person is entitled, or that car has a valid permit, um, that would be a major step. And that is something I'm still pressing for. Thank you, Councillor Page. Uh, Councillor Mitchell. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Page. I, I note in what paragraph 4.19 that there were concerns in Bristol about that ability to check because a permit is linked to a particular address and for potential stalkers or victims of domestic violence, that, that's an aspect. So we would have to be very careful about how we bring that in. But I agree, the technology exists. If the government can do it, we should be able to too on a suitably anonymised basis. Thank you. Thank you, you councillors. Can I just ask the uh, lead officer, Maxwell, and also councillor, uh, I mean, sorry, James Penman to take the comments what the subcommittee has put forward and obviously this is a pilot scheme and take it forward and we want to make sure we get everything right in order. So uh, moving on, thank you everyone. Uh, we agree with the recommended action on 2.2. Yeah, thank you. Agreed. Right. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say that this uh, concludes the part of this meeting to come to closure and I would ask uh, all the member of publics and also of to leave the building. The next uh, bit is private and confidential. Some of the items disclosure in there. So I would ask to switch your mics off as well, please everyone. <laughs>